It's state championship week here on Prep Sports Now. I'm Ray Brewer breaking it all down for you. Again, Prep Sports Now, a Las Vegas Sun podcast. We're presented by the A's and Las Vegas Aviators. We're thanking them for our support. Our last high school football podcast of the year. Probably coming back in a few weeks to talk a little high school basketball. But uh, today it's all about handing out those rings. Who's going to Jostens? Who's hoisting the trophy? Uh, looking forward to it all. Uh, we've got a celebration of high school football coming on Tuesday at Allegiant Stadium with four classifications uh, having their championship game. And, of course, Saturday in Reno, Faith Lutheran traveling up to nasty old Reno where it's going to be a little colder. They're taking on Bishop McNogue for the Class 5A Division II title. And, of course, Monday, Centennial plays Galena at Bishop Gorman. Uh, Centennial, you could argue, short into the stick because all the other games Tuesday are at Allegiant Stadium. Four games uh, starts with the lower levels. Paranagan Valley against Tonopah. Then we go Truckee against Slam Nevada, 1220, 340, Canyon Springs, Mojave, and the nightcap, 7 p.m., Arbor View taking a crack at Bishop Gorman. Bishop Gorman, of course, they've won every state championship since uh, 2007, minus two years. 08, they lost to Palo, and then Palo lost to McQueen. In 2019, those Liberty Patriots got it done. They did the unthinkable. They beat Bishop Gorman. Could Arbor View do the same thing? We're going to find out here on Prep Sports Now. Uh, been been loving talking with everybody this year. It's been uh, uh, quite a calling. Uh, I was messaging with my my good friend Lake Tahoe guy who's in town uh, for for uh, Truckee State Championship game. He's the radio voice, and he told me how uh, how fortunate I am to to have my job and you know getting to talk high school football and cover sports. Um, and 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 I'm just I'm absolutely thankful and and fortunate to be able to cover all the kids in our community. Um, I was uh, talking to somebody uh, last weekend, and we have 17 Vegas kids who are in the NFL, uh, which is like the second most in in the whole league. So that's a true testament to what we've built here in Southern Nevada. And I'm so thankful that the sun is a, a, a small part of that. Um, so two things, as I take a quick sip of my coffee, Two things come to mind uh, when we talk about what's going on at Allegiant Stadium. The first is, how cool is it that in Las Vegas, we're playing our championship games at a $2 billion stadium near the Strip? Uh, Pranagan Valley, Tonopah, I mean, kids from that small community. And that extends to, like, the cheerleaders who are going to get to perform and the bands that are going to get to perform, all doing their thing at the Raiders Stadium. Raiders open up the facility no charge i get it everybody says yeah there's tax money the raiders got to build the stadium yada yada who cares guys it brings in so much revenue for our state and it it enables us to have cool things like this so awesome experience for all these kids you know the stat 98 percent of kids only play in high school to get a chance to you know change in the locker room of the raiders and run on to an nfl field to play with the kids you grew up with, it is is so powerful. So shout out to the Raiders. I love you guys over there. Um, Canyon Springs, Mojave. The cool thing is those schools are located a mile apart from each other in North Las Vegas, and uh, they're getting an opportunity to play at Allegiant Stadium. I just think that is uh, the coolest thing. But uh, a little late. It's Thursday. We usually tape the podcast on Mondays, but. I wanted to go out, since the, since the majority of the games are on Tuesday of next week, I wanted to go out and talk to some coaches and players and kind of get a sense of, uh, of how they felt about things. And I had a great conversation with, with Coach Mike Kofer over at Slam, and I made the mistake of saying, hey, you guys, uh, you know, this is a, a kind of a cool thing. You know, you, your, your program's less than 10 years old. You know, you've reached the state championship game again. You've really solidified yourself and built this thing from the ground up. And he kind of sternly responded like, hey, dude, if, if just getting there is is all we're playing for, then <coughs> we're going to be massively disappointed. 
we're here to win. So <clears throat> none of these teams are taking the door prize of making it to the championship game. I go back to uh, <clears throat> Friday night. I covered the Arborview Coronado game. Freezing cold. Uh, the wind is is gusting up and down. And, uh, you know, I, I think back to at the beginning of the year, it was 110 degrees for kickoff, a little hotter on the turf. We were doing water timeouts. And now all of a sudden I'm sitting up there, thank God somebody gave me some hand warmers, um, and I was able to stay a little warm. But Arbor View, the theme after the game, it was, it was kind of funny because the – the announcement on the speakers was like, all right, our next game, Allegiant Stadium. And everybody jumped up and they were happy and they were dancing around. And the coach, Coach B, just says, hey, listen, guys, job's not finished. Our goal wasn't to just get to Allegiant Stadium to play a football game. Our goal is to win the football game at Allegiant Stadium. And I'm like, gosh darn, you know, Arbor View, which – for years was in that sun set region where they would ha run into Gorman in the playoffs and never make it. Uh, this is their first state championship game appearance. And for me, it's, you know, Arbor opened in 2004. So in the 20 years of the program, this is obviously the best season, um, not record wise. They've won more than 10 a few times, but 10 and one playing for the state championship. I mean, this is a legendary run, a legendary season. Way to go. Um, everything else is kind of cherry on top of the Sunday, and that's not the mentality. And I love that about Arborview, or I love that about Canyon Springs, who's not just satisfied with having an opportunity to play at the Raiders Stadium. In fact, it was expected, right? The path to Allegiant, they expected to be there. And uh, that's powerful. That's cool for me. Um, I want to break down all the games, and I'm going to start backward. Well, I'm not starting backwards. I'm going to start in time order. So, uh, and I'm going to give my pick here as well. But Faith Lutheran at Bishop Minogue. Listen, they played last year. Minogue beat them. Um, this isn't the same Minogue team. There's been some drama at that Reno school. Minogue's 9-3. They're, you know, a power up there in uh, northern Nevada. Um, I hate the fact that – I love the fact that realignment gave us five classes. So, you know, Centennial last year, Canyon Springs this year, or even Sunrise Mountain that lost last year has an opportunity to get to the state game. I hated that we bowed down to Reno and let the weak Reno schools play in a lower level to win a state championship. With that said, I am heavily, heavily, heavily rooting for the Crusaders and Mike Sanford uh, to get the job done. Last year, of course, they came up short in the state title game against Minogue, and uh, it wasn't even. You know, I guess it was close. It was forty to twenty-one. They lost forty to twenty-one last year, and I've said all along, guys, that I love this Faith Lutheran football team. Alex Rogers at quarterback has been as good as you could expect uh, for a high school football player. Um, he just isn't turning the ball over, um, running the offense extremely well. He, and he should be he should be applauded. I saw somebody on Twitter or X or whatever you guys want to call it, right, um, say that he's the best quarterback in Nevada. Well, I'm not quite sure about that. Um, I'm sure whoever the quarterback is at Bishop Gorman might uh, say something different. And the fatty stature kid at Arborview is darn good. But Alex Rogers has had a hell of a good year. Um, and let me tell you his stats because they're really impressive. He has completed 60% of his passes for 27 touchdowns. 2,200 yards, and just three interceptions. So think about that, three interceptions. He's also done a good job of distributing the ball. Um, you've got players with, you know, 32 receptions, 31 receptions. 
Um, and, and they run the ball just extremely well at Faith Lutheran. Um, great balance. Kale Breslin, obviously, is their workhorse. 11 touchdowns in seven games, 731 yards. He's going to BYU. You would like to think that he gets the ball in his hands and they get going. Um, but Faith Lutheran has just been equally good defensively. Uh, linebacker, uh, Gavin Day, 100 tackles on the season. Um, you've got you've to gotta love that. Um, they're, they're ready to go. This is going to be a, a, a great game. I'm rooting for faith. I'm picking them to win because I've said since August, when it was 110 degrees out, that the Crusaders had the best team. And I've also said that they were not going to lose. So I'm all in on the Crusaders. Class 5A Division 3, uh, noon, Monday, Galena against Centennial. Last year, Galena lost a legacy in this spot. Last year, Centennial won the 4A title. And Centennial, my friends, has won one, two, three, four, five in a row, going for six, getting hot when it counts. Uh, first playoff game, 52 to 14 over Clark. Second playoff game, 34 7 over Desert Oasis. And now Centennial looking to go back to back against Galena. And it's a uh, it's a testament to what Coach DJ's done over there because I saw them week one against Desert Pines. Of course, Desert Pines higher classification wasn't exactly in love with the Centennial football team. They were out of shape and uh, they lost at the buzzer, of course. But I just I knew right away that they were going to have some problems. They've done a decent job of trying to develop uh, some quarterbacks and some running backs, but what, what's happened is they're just running the ball the ball well. Kai Harris um, has really emerged, uh, 1,100 yards, 16 touchdowns on the season, and uh, you know they've got a sophomore wide receiver, the Jet Jaden Thomas, who's got 44 grabs, not bad for a sophomore. And uh, I've got them winning. I, I'd be honest with you, I don't know a lot about Galena. Obviously, they've got a, a decent program because they're playing for uh, the state championship for a second season. Um, but the one thing I do know, and, and Galena's had a great year. They're 9-2. and two. They haven't lost a game in the league. Uh, they beat a, a, a Spring Creek team that was... Uh, that, that's good. They beat DeMonte Ranch, a, a great win. DeMonte Ranch, uh, larger enrollment. They beat them twice, including 16-13, uh, to get to the championship game. Um, I'm taking the Bulldogs because of one simple fact. The game's here in Las Vegas. Um, you, you just, it's tough for high school kids to travel, um, and I just don't see Galena being able to uh, rally to uh, take care of business. Uh, Galena, uh, they're you know they've passed for you know almost two thousand yards this year, rushed for fifteen hundred. Um, you know probably not as athletic as Centennial, if I had to guess. And uh, we're, we're, we're going all in on the Bulldogs. All in on the Bulldogs. Uh, bringing us to the Class 3A championship game between Slam Nevada, Slam Nevada, and Truckee. Uh, Truckee is on a massive winning streak. Uh, in fact, the last time Truckee lost... I had, uh, let me see, I'm trying to find out the year, because they were undefeated, they're undefeated this year, Truckee is 12-0, they've outscored opponents 4-7-7-98, I will tell you, Virgin gave them a little bit of a scare last week, uh, put up 27 points, uh, 41-27, Virgin, heck of a fight last week against Truckee, Truckee was undefeated in... Uh, 2023, they also beat Slam for the state championship game. They've actually beat them the last two years, so this is the third straight year they've played for the championship game. And Truckee did lose in 2022, 
uh, to Elko, pretty convincingly 43-11. But other than that, Truckee has been unstoppable. I've previously said that Truckee has the best team in northern Nevada. Of course, they're on the California-Nevada border up there near Tahoe. Beautiful scenery. Love seeing it. Uh, here's why I like... Well, how am I going to word this? Because I know, I know the three A people. I I I love I love Slam. Um, I love what they do over there. Um, I they've got a stud in Damian Neville. Uh, there's no other way to say it. And Slam season, just like Neville season, has kind of been up and down. Right? Slam started out losing some games they probably shouldn't have lost. Traveled out of town, challenged some opponents. Um, it, you know, it, it is what it is. Neville's rush for 1,186 yards, 18 touchdowns on the season, averaging 119 yards a game on the ground. I don't want to tell Kofor how to run his team. I don't. But I'm giving this kid the ball 30 times. He's got to touch the ball repeatedly. Best player on the field. Most athletic player on the field. And I know Slam's going to... I mean, I know Truckee's going to say, oh, he's not the best player on the field. We've got guys that could go, yada, yada, yada. And I get it. I get it. I I, I understand. Uh, Truckee's undefeated for a reason, and it's a darn good program. And I've got Truckee winning this game. It's a familiar opponent. They're a powerhouse in the Class 3A. But Slam's not going to roll over because... They've got a really, really, really good player in Neville. So Slam with Neville has got a chance. They're not going to win. I'm picking Truckee. Um, Slam, shout out to them. They've been at the state game now three years in a row. A lot of you guys don't realize that you know Slam practices at Russell Road Sports Complex because they don't have a home stadium. They've played games at Foothill. They've played games at Basic. They've played games at Spring Valley. Really tough to get like that, you know, everybody walk down to the neighborhood school type of tradition team thing. This We're talking 10 years, right? So for them to be in the state game again, for them to, you know, kind of flex their muscles between Virgin Mawapa and Slam, it's been a nice little uh, three-way race to the finish line over the years. I don't think any of them could have beat Truckee this year and probably last year as well. Um so it is what it is. Next game, the Class 4A game, Mojave 11 and 1. They lost the first game of the year to Damien of Hawaii 28 to 6. And then they've been they haven't lost. Um beat up Canyon Springs 34 to 0. They're playing Canyon Springs again for the state championship game. Does that mean it's going to be 34-0? No. Both Canyon Springs and Mojave, when they played the initial season, an initial time over Labor Day weekend, right? We're here Thanksgiving. You're going to go get your turkey after you listen to the podcast. They played over Labor Day. Both teams didn't have the current roster they have. Um, sometimes it takes certain schools a little longer to get their players cleared with physicals and practices because of their environment, and both teams are massively different. With that said, Mojave went one, two, three, four, five weeks without giving up a point from September to October, and they've, you know, they they had a great fourth down stop against Losi last week to win the the, the league. Uh, which I thought was kind of like the state championship game. Um, massive difference in the leagues. The Mojave Somerset version, a lot better. Canyon, like we talked about last week, had to beat Valley, had to beat Shap, and then had to beat last week. I can't remember. Gosh, I'm getting old, guys. I apologize. Oh, El Dorado. El Dorado. <laughs> to make the state championship game. Uh, Canyon, of course, started their season off. They lost a bunch of games. Now they've won a bunch of games. I think this is Mojave's title to win. 
I am confident in Mojave. I am picking Mojave. I do not, however, know if I'm going to regret it later. Um, Mojave has done a really good job running the ball. They've rushed for 2,400 yards this year. Um, again, I don't I, – I hate the stats in the 4A because you're playing Western and Rancho, and those teams are just so bad. I, I hate to bring up stats, but – I've got Mojave. I'm picking Mojave. Mojave over Canyon Springs. And, of course, the game everybody's been waiting for. Maybe I should have done this game first. Bishop Gorman, Arbor View, a rematch. They played earlier in the season. Uh, Gorman absolutely, uh, like they do every team, uh, beat them, dominated them. Uh, one stat kind of stands out, though. The first time they met, you, you got to, in football, no matter what, you got to have balance between rushing and passing, right? Arbor View and the Aggie Raid, as they call their, their offense, right? It's the, the offense that got popular at Texas Tech. Um, you know, Reno ran it when it, was, when it was good. The Air Raid is predicated on quick passes. You also got to be able to run the rock. Last time Arbor played Gorman, Arbor ran for 11 total yards. Now they passed for 250, a lot of that coming late, but they only ran for 11 yards. The problem when you're trying to sling the ball around real quick is when the defense and the DBs are so tight on their, uh, their guarding, it's tough to get the ball out. Um, you know, Thatcher is going to have a limited amount of time to pass. And while his core group of receivers are highly accomplished and they're young and they all have scholarship offers, the question is, is could they create enough separation to catch the ball? So Damani Warren, Jaden Williams, Zach Ferris, you know, 35 receptions for Ferris on the year. Warren, 34. Williams, 46. 11 touchdowns for Williams. Arborview could sling it around with the best of them. Thatcher's passed for 3,000 yards, 33 touchdowns. He does have nine interceptions. And it's running the rock. Is Bell going to be able to get some, you know, some space to run? You know, he's, you know, he's averaging, Cameron Bell's averaging 4.7 yards a carry. Is he going to have enough time to run? Gorman is so good defensively, right? You got, you've got Prince Williams, D-line, middle linebacker, you got McGruber, McCoober. Back in, you got Jet Washington. And they're just defensively, this Gorman team, usually Gorman has got, everyone a great quarterback who everybody knows about right you, you know you go back to Anu Solomon right Randall Jr. <clears throat> Tate Martell and you know Mike Alejado national player of the year last year and Gorman is not like if you say okay who's the one offensive player you need to stop from Gorman I don't know. Who, who do you need to stop? I think this Gorman team, unlike any other Gorman team in their run that we documented at the beginning of the show, they have so much balance. Like, it's not one player. It's not like the year they had Shaq Powell and he ran forever. Um, you know, the quarterback, uh, Eugenio, has settled in nicely. He's completed 92 of 134 passes. A respectable 1,800 yards, 26 touchdowns, two interceptions. Um, you know, they're, you know, Miles Norman's rushed for 549 yards. Um, Jonathan Kors got 640 yards. Um, it's it's not like they're 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 killing you nicely. Um, you know, Derek Meadows, a wide receiver, 496 yards, only 21 receptions. Um, you know, to kind of lead the way. This is not uh, a Gorman team with, 
you know, Ryan Smith and Cedric Tillman at wide receiver, they're top two great wide receivers. But where this Gorman team is different is on the line, they're powerful. And defensively, they are really, really impressive. Um, just, you know, you know, Prince Williams has got, you know, 68 tackles and nine sacks. Not bad. Um, you know, Jet Washington's a top 10 player for the class of 2025 in the backfield. And like you, I'm trying to find a way for Arbor View to stay in the game to be competitive. And the truth of the matter is, like we saw with Palo Verde in the late 2000s or Liberty the last decade, and now Arbor View, they've all had great Division I players and they've all had success and we've all thought that they've had an opportunity to beat Gorman. The truth of the matter, though, friends, is I really think you need to score on every position, every possession to beat Gorman. I don't even know who their punter is. It's got to be the loneliest job in America. Like, how many games do you have to – could you imagine being the starting punter? Do you letter regardless? Like, how many games do you have to play to get your letter? Um, and, you know, we don't know who the punter is because the kid's never used. They, they, they can score I, – I always say this about Gorman. No matter how you look – no matter how you break down Gorman's roster, no matter who the quarterback is, no matter who the running backs are, no matter who the wide receiver is, no matter what, Gorman against Nevada teams could line up in the power eye and run the ball 55 times a game and win. No questions about it. Because Gorman's guards and tackles and center are bigger and stronger and more physical than any other team they're going to line up against. And Arborview's got a, 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 you know, they've got at least one D1 offensive lineman, but you need five. You need to go five to be able to hang with Gorman. And then if you hang until halftime, then they really start wearing you down. So I'm picking Gorman. So to go over my winners, I go Gorman, Faith, Gorman over Arbor, Faith over Minogue, Centennial over Galena, Mojave over Canyon, Truckee over Slam, and I'm not picking the Paranagant Valley game because I'm outclassed with Paranagant Valley. Um, friends, it's been a heck of a run. Um, just think, I started covering high school football in 1996 when I was 19 years old. I will be 49 in February. So, uh, Really blessed, again, to, to be part of your journey, and I'm super thankful for everybody who's listened, and I'm even more thankful for the A's and Las Vegas Aviators. I'm telling you right now, there's nothing like going to a good ball game at Las Vegas Ballpark, and I'm so thankful for their sponsorship. Uh, rooting everybody a safe, safe state championship weekend.